everyone we are now back at wri refineries and there's been quite a lot of change in the system the last time we were here that's right we have an actual designated freaking spot for the oil tanker trucks which is really nice complete with a uh, basin so if there's ever any oil leaks then that will go into there instead of polluting the environment we have the watsonburg refineries incorporated we have a secure access door which is pretty nice we're going to show this a little later. First things first, I am going to show off the the power plant. Yes, indeed. Oh, freak. I think we almost... So, yes, after a long time, we've actually decided to actually add a power plant to this facility. Which is pretty nice. Yo, I am completely off the road. Okay. Okay, we almost crashed into the reactors. I'm not even going to lie. That was almost bad. Don't crash into the reactor, thank you. All right, so right here is the reactor hall here. This is made with the most reinforced blocks. There is at least four, three or four layers of CMB bricks up there to ex uh, prevent any f explosions from happening or from, you know, spreading everywhere. And we have not one, whew, we, we don't have just one, we have two reactors here. One is the primary reactor and one is a secondary reactor whenever maintenance is being done on the first one here. So let's say if the fuel runs out of this, right? Then you would turn this one off, and you would turn this one on to make sure there isn't a disruption in the power flow. As, as, as you can see, it gives it just enough time for these turbines to kick on before these shut off, which is absolutely beautiful. But anyway... We're not going to do that right now. That is, see, look at that. That is actually beautiful. That is the redundancies that are just beautiful. So, the, yep. Ready. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Alright, so we have not... We have not just one, not two, but three turbines in tandem here. Which are actually completely filled up because our refinery which we made, is actually not using that much power right now because it's, you know, dormant, I guess. So anyway, we also have numerous Geiger counters around the facility to, you know, make sure there is adequate means of testing just in case there is a radiation leak within the facility. It's pretty nice. And we have our main switch here, which actually turns off the power from the oil refinery from the turbines to the oil refinery so this cuts it off right here because if this was on the power from the uh, turbines would be sent out to this which didn't get sent out to the power pylons and stuff and then delivered to the refinery let's go ahead and turn these all on right now Right, that is it for that. Yes, and I forgot my car at the other side of the facility, but it's all right because look at that speed. The asphalt actually makes you walk fast, which is really nice. All right, so right back at the main office now, the Watsonburg Refineries Incorporated. So the refinery main office here. Look at that, is beautiful. There is a system crash going on with this monitor. So that's probably not good. But anyway, this is our switch yard right here, which delivers our power straight to the main the main breaker area. The main power distribu distribution hub right there. It's nice, we'll go to that. Maybe we'll be wondering what this is for. That's a surprise that we'll use later. Watsonburg Refineries Incorporated. No smoking on these premises. All personnel must follow all safety guidelines. All personnel must wear personal protective equipment in the refinery. Alright, so we're gonna, of course, suit up, you know, even if we are in creative. We also get a fire extinguisher, which is really nice. And a gas sensor. Truly very nice. And it's a foam one, which is really nice. So anyway, let's get into it. So we have the crude oil heater power disconnect, which disconnects the crude oil heaters from the grid. Next, we have the oil refinery tower disconnect, which disconnects these two towers here from the uh, power grid. And then we have our chemical power plant, which is the big power plant, or, or chemical, chemical plant, which is right over there. 
and we have our flare stack power disconnect, which disconnects these flare stacks over there from the power. And then we have the hydrocarbons production power disconnect, which disconnects the hydrocarbons production area of the facility from the grid, just in case there is any industrial accidents. So first things first, the oil comes in from these tanker trucks here, gets piped into this big tank right here. You can actually see the level, which is pretty nice. That one's empty, which is actually amazing, really. So it gets pumped in from up there into this big ass tank here. And then it gets put into a small buffer tank, which then gets put into here. And then this gets boiled up, turns into hot crude oil, and then the hot crude oil gets sent into the oil refinery, thus getting it broken down into heavy oil, naphtha, light oil, and petroleum gas. Now the petroleum gas will get sent directly into the chemical factory. We'll make the LPG, liquid petroleum gas. And then the subprocesses of the heavy oil and the light oil get sent to the fractioning tower. and get broken down into diesel and kerosene for the light oil and bitumen and industrial oil for the heavy oil. And then those get set. The uh, kerosene and diesel just get sent up to the, the uh, tank yard over there. Our industrial oil and bitumen get sent to our towers. Kind of like cracking towers. The bitumen gets sent here. Creates crude oil, aromatic hydrocarbons, and low pressure steam. Let's give me a second. Alright, so anyway, as I was saying, for some reason there's a glitch, like, where every time I come over here, just, they're labeled as none. So I don't know why it does that. Anyway. So then, our industrial oil gets sent to this catalytic cracking tower, which then gets turned into naphtha, petroleum gas, and low-pressure steam. Alrighty. So our petroleum gas obviously gets sent to that petroleum gas tank over there. Aromatic hydrocarbons also get sent to the tanks. So this is our tank yard right here. We have refrigerant gas. We have aromatic hydrocarbons. We have unsatur unsaturated hydrocarbons. And we have the petroleum gas. Now whenever these tanks get to a high level, that's when these flare stacks will open up and start producing power. Or start off-gassing, if you will. Just like that, so. I wish there was a way you could automate that. That'd be really nice. Actually, I think there might be, actually. Yeah, I'm just impatient. That's what it is. So, yeah. And then the power from that gets routed back into the main, you know, power distribution center over there. All right. So, now let's take a look at the, arom the hydrocarbons production. So we take the crude oil from this, which then gets compressed twice, and then it gets sent to the vacuum refinery here. Now the vacuum refinery creates vacuum heavy oil, refinement, vacuum light oil, and sour gas. Our sour gas gets sent into the coker unit here, which then gets turned into coker gas and gets sent to the flare stack over here. So whenever this gets filled up, filled up that's when we initiate the power generation sequence or off gassing of that and then the subprocess the uh the components from this operation here vacuum heavy oil and our vacuum light oil and our reformed gas gets broken down to their respective components so vacuum heavy oil creates industrial oil slash heavy heating oil our heavy heating oil goes into this catalytic cracking tower which then creates heating oil and reformant gas. Then our heating oil gets sent to this catalytic reformer here, which creates naphtha, petroleum gas, and liquid hydrogen. Oh lordy, this is a lot of sub-processes. And our vacuum light oil here gets sent in, and it creates kerosene and reformant gas. Now the reformant gas from all these processes gets sent up here to make aromatic hydrocarbons and BTX. All right, so then our aromatic hydrocarbons get sent out. I don't know 
if I explained this, but I'm not. Ah, yes, this is the petroleum gas refiner. All right, so our aromatic hydrocarbons get sent out here. They get shoved into this tank, which is, you know, pretty nice. All right, so for petroleum gas, in order to create more hydrocarbons, we actually send our petroleum gas up through these pipes here and into this catalytic reformer here, which then creates unsaturated hydrocarbons, reforming gas, and liquid hydrogen. So that is pretty much all the basic stuff here that is getting made up here. This is a little complicated, I'm not even going to lie. So basically, when everything's all done getting made, it gets sent into these pipes here and sent to these big-ass tanks. This one here holds gasoline. This one here holds diesel, kerosene, liquid petroleum gas, BTX here. I, there's not really too much of that. And of course, naphtha. Now, once these tanks get filled up, or at least partially way full, these tanker trucks will come by and take whatever material, whatever sub, whatever petroleum byproduct they need, and then ship it off to their respective companies. Now, in order to maintain such a big facility like this, we need, of course, supplies. So we have, of course, the no-smoking flammable materials. If you already find it your supply depot. We have crates for like machines and supplies and stuff. We have kerosene barrels just in case our machines need any of that. And of course explosive barrels. Just in case we want to end up on a CSV video. <laughs> so anyway, that is pretty much the full whole entire tour of the refinery. It's Oh, you know what? We forgot the one thing. Just remembered. So also, these yellow, yellow lines here are to prevent people from walking into dangerous production areas. So anyway, last but not least, we have our observation station right here. Which consists of a computer, a monitor, a bunch of crates down here. And one of these little things. We'll show you what that does here in a minute. Alright, so there's three levels to this to observe the refinery. This is made out of flat, like, blast proof materials. So if there ever is an explosion, this would be a, an ideal place to be. So we have reinforced laminate and decrete bricks, which should be roughly very well, you know, explosive resistant. So anyway, you may be wondering what this is for. You've seen a lot of these throughout the facility. This, we're going to use the one with the light, is the alarm system for the facility if there is ever anything that goes wrong. So let's say our uh, catalytic cracker unit over there has decided to spring a leak and spring flammable hydrocarbons everywhere. And you can just see the vapor pouring out of there. Then you want to hit this, and that'll alert the whole entire facility that shit's about to get bad. I, it's very loud, too. So basically we combined a container alarm with an air raid siren to give it a, you know, unharmonious siren, which, you know, should raise panic in anybody that's, you know, concerned. So anyway, there actually needs to be a way to actually, like, trigger, like, in, like industrial hazard, or industrial accidents in the HM Nuclear Tech mod. Oh, also another thing that would be nice to have in the HM Nuclear Tech mod would be gas-like detectors that could output a redstone signal. That would also be pretty nice. But anyway, that is it for this video. If you guys liked it, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.